But in the end of the day, every single country is going to take the decision based on what is best for the country. And Sweden is going to do the same. I really didn't want to do this, uh, but a lot of people are asking about this and I understand that this is about Sweden and many other countries. So I just really briefly want to make a video talking about what, what it is said and what experts in Sweden say about uh, a potential Swedish membership in NATO. Now, before we start, two disclaimers, and it is that one, do not trust a random guy on YouTube. Just try to always find and back up the information on the internet. Uh, this is to me, this is to anybody else. I'm not an expert. I have though been collecting basically what in the last days has been the opinions of experts in Sweden. So I basically translated what is in the Swedish news to you because I know that many of you are interested in, in this. The second thing is that whatever is said in Sweden, the priority for Swedish politics is Sweden and safety and guarantees for safety of Sweden and Swedish citizens. So please keep this in mind. There's always a balance, right? Sweden is taking decision for Sweden. Other countries are taking decision for themselves first. That should always be the priority of a domestic policy or domestic uh, politics. So really briefly, I know this doesn't need any kind of introduction, but what has been happening is that, of course, the invasion, Putin's invasion of Ukraine, of a sovereign country like Ukraine, has, uh, let's say, changed a little bit the political sphere around in Europe. So all of a sudden, uh, all of the countries in the EU and in NATO, so the military alliance, has been strengthening a lot. And countries that have always been neutral, like Sweden, are now scared and thinking more about what happens if for the first time we are the one being invaded um, and not another country. So this is shaping a lot the opinion in Sweden. Now Sweden, uh, differently from Finland, and you will notice that I will talk a lot about Sweden and Finland in this video because Sweden and Finland are very very close to each other. Uh, I don't think they can be divided also because Sweden and Finland are the two countries that are that have been lately like slightly threatened uh, to not join NATO and on them there's a lot of responsibilities right now when it comes to foreign politics politics but also if they will make a decision they will make it together this has been very clear and the prime ministers have always talked about this and when it comes to NATO membership uh, if one of the two countries applies you'll be sure that the other one applies as well. There will be a, a, joint, a concerted application from both countries. However, to start with, the situation for Finland and Sweden is slightly different. So while Finland uh, already has prepared to met the requirements that uh, for NATO membership, for example, Finland already exceeds the 2% of GDP uh, invested in military and in defense, Sweden does not. I believe it's around 1.3 to 1.4 percent of the GDP, which means, of course, that Sweden has more work to do. So Sweden's potential application to NATO is not going to be as quick as the Finnish. This is one thing to keep in mind. Um, Finland is further on, basically, in the requirements for NATO membership. At the same time, uh, why those two countries? Uh, Sweden and Finland are the only two countries that are not in NATO, uh, that are really close to, um, to Russia, uh, and that are part of the European Union. Finland also shares a really long border with Russia, and an unfortunate history with Russia, where Russia has tried to invade, and also has invaded and controlled Finland previously. This is also the reason why Finland has a really strong military. Uh, a country of 5.3 million inhabitants has a military, can call a, a military, which is a 900,000 people, almost 1 billion people. So that is a, a scary, a crazy military force. Uh, and also, as we've seen in history, it's not that easy to invade Finland. And Russia should know something about that. But of course, it's an easy threat. It's there, it's on the border. Russia doesn't want NATO on the border. Also, the neutrality of Sweden has always been important. For 
basically 200 years since the Napoleonic War, Sweden has never been militarily employed in other countries' um, military. So this has helped Sweden basically avoid all the major uh, European conflicts, as I said, since the Napoleonic War, since the 1800s, which is a huge thing. And of course, Sweden thinks about this. So NATO membership would mean that any country that, become, that, that is attacked, all of a sudden now Sweden has to go and help militarily. It's not just sending weapons like it's doing right now, producing weapons, which Sweden is really good at. It's, it's going to mean sending Swedes to war, sending Swedish military to war. It means spending more on war because NATO membership, it means that you have to go for those 1.3% to those 2% of GDP uh, spending on military, which also means where does money going to go um, come from. It means that, of course, those money needs to be pulled off something else, uh, probably somewhere in the Swedish welfare. I don't know. This, there's no talk about this, uh, at least yet. So this is going to be eventually, potentially interesting to see. At the same time, Sweden has Gotland, and Gotland is uh, the biggest island in the Baltic Sea, and it is in a strategically very interesting position, and Russia has never, never hid the fact that they would love Gotland. Uh, they have repeatedly broken the water and air border, so airspace of Sweden, both with submarines in the, in the previous years and or even lately with airplanes. So Russia has been basically showing Sweden that so we can come anytime. This has also led to Sweden basically improving their defenses. So as you can start to see, there are pros and cons to everything. Uh, and now we will go a bit closer to what is the NATO membership, why this would would happen and why Sweden has been changing and the information that I've been gathering. So there are pros and cons to everything, but remember from now on, try always to see the Swedish prime minister, the Swedish defense minister, the Swedish government in general takes the decision depending on what is best for Sweden. It is under threat of being invaded. It's not unusual to see this shift that is happening. The people are starting to think more and more, if we get invaded, what is the chance that we can defend ourselves against Russia? And Sweden is a small country compared to Russia. Uh, the military of Sweden is, I would believe, somewhat more modern, but don't take me on this, I'm not an expert, than Russia, but it has, of course, nuclear weapons, ballistic missiles, and so on. So at the end of the day, what is most important for decision making and in, in for the Swedish government is what are the chances of Sweden basically to survive a potential attack and and this is where it gets tricky because a potential attack on Sweden would mean that Sweden would most likely maybe with the help military help of Finland or the other way around so a, a, a Russian attack on Finland would see a military intervenience probably of Sweden but that's it. When it comes to troops, when it comes to uh, soldiers, those two countries are going to be alone. Because what has been very clear is that despite being in the European Union, and the European Union has the Article 42.7, which basically states that the countries will help each other in case of a military attack, EU is, a, you can, is an economic uh, alliance. And basically the same thing is said in the NATO articles, which is a military alliance. So all of a sudden, the NATO membership would outrule what it is, the EU membership. What all the experts say in Sweden and what the media say in Sweden is that in case of an invasion of Sweden, Sweden would see basically the same type of help that Ukraine is seeing. So no troops, it's going to be a very small country. Ukraine is huge compared to Sweden and Ukraine has been preparing for this invasion since 2014. I don't know how prepared Sweden is. This is the fact, right? And we will not know because we don't even know what kind of potential attack it could be on Sweden. So this is why Sweden now is starting to think, is, is it going to be enough that countries like the US and the EU have promised to give 
support. But this support is not in the form of troops. There's never gonna be any troops. It's gonna be money, there's gonna be weapons, there's gonna be the same kind of support that, that Ukraine is seeing right now. And I don't know if there's gonna be enough for Sweden. So now Sweden is, what should we do? Should we poke Russia? Should we uh, basically apply for the NATO membership? But this membership is gonna be increasing the chances of basically pushing Putin even more with his shoulder against the wall and do some stupid things. Or should we take the risk of being the weak country around and the easy goal for Russia to come and fight basically a same almost undisturbed war as it's doing in Ukraine, militarily speaking at least. Also, we've seen what basically Putin is doing. Unpredictable. He's saying nothing is going to happen and the day after is invading a country. So we cannot trust him in that, on, on that side either. And uh, we've seen the brutalities that are happening. So he's not following basically the, the laws of war. Um, now Putin is even uh, on trial in Den Haag. Uh, in the Netherlands um, for his uh, crime of war. He's becoming more and more and more unpredictable. And this is, of course, is an increased risk for Sweden and Finland. This is why the Sweden, uh, Finland now has, I believe, almost 70% of people want Finland to be part of NATO. Sweden has just this week gone above 51%. Uh, and. Uh, you know, this is the first time that Sweden has a majority for NATO membership ever. And it's a big thing. And it's the result of all the situations. So a pros for Sweden to become a member, not a partner, but a member of NATO is that a membership would ensure, would guarantee military support. So troops and other countries coming and defending Sweden in case of a Russian invasion. So at the end, if Putin's goal was to basically deter other countries to joining uh, NATO, uh, this is happening all basically the opposite. If they, if you wanted to have a neutrality, uh, of line of neutrality between Russia and Europe, now it, 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 it's basically happening the opposite. Now, Russia is gonna most likely be surrounded by NATO and EU countries. Uh, even Ukraine, we know what's, what's happening there if, if things don't change badly there. So this is the situation in Sweden. This is why Swedish... So this is the situation in Sweden. According to let's say the experts and people who follow politics and work with politics and journalists and um, ministers and prime minister itself, it is very likely that Sweden and Finland together will apply for NATO membership. But what does this mean for all the countries? What does this mean for the war? Is this gonna upscale the war to a much larger scale? We don't know it. Um, does this work as a deterrent for Russia to attack other countries and to say, okay, we, we're not going to go anywhere here. Um, we don't have any basically majority. We cannot threaten other countries. Uh, this has been a mistake from our side. Um, we don't know it. Uh, it's, I hope the war ends as soon as possible. I hope Everybody's going to be safe from now on, but um, it's unfortunately not up to us. Uh, it's mainly up to Putin. But in the end of the day, Sweden is always going to take the decision for what is best for Sweden. And right now, a NATO membership is not considered as risky as a non-NATO membership. So what an invasion to Sweden might do to Sweden. <sighs> What it means, I don't know. Uh, I can just let you know that I live outside of Stockholm in the archipelago, so if Russia ever decides to get to Stockholm, I'll be the first one to see it. And I definitely want to see that. So that said, be nice in the comment. Remember, we're all in this situation. We all have fears. 
none of us wants this thing to happen. Uh, none of us wants to see the images we see from Ukraine. We want a, a country where we can just raise our family, be safe, everybody can be safe, all our friends can be safe, and not having to witness what we're witnessing right now. But in the end of the day, every single country is gonna take the decision based on what is best for the country, and Sweden is gonna do the same. Sweden is gonna take a decision based on what is best for Swedish citizens. I wanna stay positive, I wanna say that this is gonna end as soon as possible, and please everybody, thank you for watching and be safe.